Now, when Todd Munkin first said this on August 5th, 2023, I thought that he was just being modest. Uh, he's a new offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens, and he got skilled guys like Lamar Jackson, Odell Beckham, Mark Andrew, Rashad Bateman, Devin Dubin, Nelson Aguilar, J.K. Dobbins, uh, Zay Flower, and, and many more. So I'm thinking, Todd, Todd, you, you ain't got a lot like that. I thought he was just trying to keep these boys humble, trying to keep them motivated, trying to make sure they stay hungry, trying to make sure they don't get all arrogant and cocky and start feeling themselves too much. And I was like, all right, Todd Monken, I respect it and I get it. I actually admire it. I, I love that. But <laughs> he wasn't lying when he said this. And let's read the exact quote. He said, now, right now, it's not hard to project because we're not really good right now. We've got a long ways to go. And he was speaking about the offense. He said they weren't really good right then. Right then and there, they weren't really good. <laughs> and when we watch the game on Sunday, it's like, oh, yeah, they, uh, they do got a long ways to go. Now, I, I can't call them bad because they weren't straight up bad. Uh, you don't put up 25 points uh, if you're a bad offense in a week one game, uh, especially in a new offense. But I think it's very important. Uh, and I know we touched on this briefly yesterday, uh, but it's very important to make sure we have context because context is key when it comes to so many different things just in life in general and with this new Baltimore Ravens offense it's very important that we remember that that it is new it's brand new so there are going to be a little more hiccups than usual especially early on because they're all learning something new something brand new is being installed to this team uh, so they all are going to have to go through the growing pains of it being new uh, it's like when you first when you first get a job you're not going to know exactly what to do and how to do everything right away are you Unless, I mean, you like got this crazy mind or something and you know things ahead of when they happening. But if you don't, then you're not going to know exactly what to do right away. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some growing pains. That's why they have things called training. And in the NFL's case, they have things called practice. And then in the NFL's case, they also have something called a preseason. Because pre is the prefix to the season. So that means it comes before the season because that helps you get right. That helps you get acclimated to whatever your team is going to be doing. That helps get you in the flow of things. And with the Baltimore Ravens, specifically on offense, their starters did not play in the preseason. And I know there's, it's like, I feel like it's like 50-50 on this. 50% of people are like, no, don't play him in preseason. Don't take no risks. Don't do it. I know we want to see him, but just wait till regular season. And I get that completely. That, that, that's me all day, every day, especially after what we done been through for years with all these injuries. It's like we're trying to fix it, but it still keeps creeping its ugly head into the Ravens' uh, roster. All these injuries just continue to happen. But that's another topic for another day. But anyway, offense didn't play in the preseason. The starters didn't play in the preseason. But then there's another 50% of Ravens fans that are like, see, this is why they should have played in the preseason. They should have had some snaps in the preseason. They're rusty like this. Oh, man, if they would have played, the played in the preseason, then they would be a lot better. And, hey, you could be right. You could be 1,000% right. That may be facts. But at the same time, me, I would still side with the previous side. Because I guarantee, I guarantee, if they would have played in the preseason, if somebody would have got hurt, a starter would have got hurt, the same people would have been saying, ah, this is why you don't play your starters in the preseason. Why waste the time? Why would you do that? But we're here now. So with them, those two things right there, those are two major factors with this Baltimore Ravens offense. It's brand new, and that was their first time playing an actual game all together. And that's big. That, 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 that's huge. It was their first time playing all together. So not only are they learning something new, but they haven't gone against another opponent until that game. So that's, that's something that we got to keep in mind. But then on top of all of that, on top of all of that, they still put up 25 points. They still put up 25 points. Now with Lamar, Lamar Jackson in, in, in that game, 
not his best game at all. <laughs> not his worst. Not his worst at all. But definitely not his best game at all. Uh, the interception, even though that, that came with pressure. Also, oof, it, it, he had the guy wrapped around his legs when he threw that ball. Uh, so he couldn't get as much umph on it as normal. Um, so that ended up being – that's what pressure does, though. Pressure forces good quarterbacks – into bad throws And that's what it's all about That's why we want the Ravens to get more pressure on the Bulls but, but anyway, we're not talking about defense um, But also the, the fumbles The fumbles uh, The one where Lamar Jackson was running And that cornerback just knocked the ball out He said, oh no, you ain't about to get me, buddy uh, And the, you gotta take care of the ball, Lamar And then the fumble that I thought I really thought that Justice Hill knocked it out Live, I thought Justice Hill knocked it out but I know uh, my guy Sip to Tally, coach, uh, he had put out some film on that, and he showed a different angle. This is why, hey, that's why that, that, that all-22 film, hey, that's why that thing is real deal. And he actually showed the ball was moving a bit before Justice Hill was even by Lamar. I said, whoa, so we got to get Lamar some super glue or something. But he'll be fine again. First game. First game. And, and new offense. New everything. And Lamar did say, too. Not to say that this is the reason why he had the fumbles, but he did say, hey, he said, I'm anxious. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious. But something to keep in mind, if that's how the Ravens offense is going to look uh, in being brand new with no experience together and them playing together for the very first time, if that's how it looks now, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited because imagine how things will look when they settle in. Imagine how things will look when they get more comfortable. Imagine how things will look when they get Mark Andrews back, even though Ronnie Stanley, he's going to be out. Even though Tyler Linderbaum, he's going to be out. Uh, even though J.K. Dobbins, he is all the way out. So it's like we got some hope. And then with the injuries, they kind of stomp on that a little bit. But we still do have some hope. The offensive line, uh, and it's really tough to judge the offensive line moving forward because of those things that we just mentioned. Ronnie Stanley and Tyler Linderbaum are going to be out for however long they're going to be going for, and those are obviously huge blows. I did read something that said Tyler Linderbaum was the highest-graded uh, center in the NFL week one, um, but now for however, for however long he's out for, we will be missing that. So it's probably going to be Sam Mustafer because he stepped in. Uh, probably Patrick McCary at left tackle, most likely, because they, they haven't been having him play center. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Ravens did also just sign another offensive lineman. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's tough. But Because the offensive line in that game, ooh, and that was the start of that. It was rough. It was, it was really, really rough. But what I would expect moving forward from the Baltimore Ravens and a little bit earlier in the games, because in that last game, it was a second-half adjustment. Uh, Patrick Ricard. I do expect to see Patrick Ricard on the field a lot more moving forward, especially with the banged up offensive line, especially uh, because Lamar Jackson is going to need all the protection that he can possibly get. Because uh, when you lose starters on the offensive line, oh, you can tell. Ho hey, hopefully with the Ravens, they won't be able to tell, but you, you can usually tell. Um, so that's going to be big moving forward. Uh, but as far as receivers, hey, they look good. They look they they look they look good. They all catching the ball. We didn't see any drops from the wide receivers. I know we saw one from Charlie Kohler and I think I think that was it. I think well, I can't remember any other ones. But yeah, they they were catching the ball and whatnot. They were moving good after the catch, especially Terry Flowers. So we my point is with all that being said, we have a lot to look forward to. And if twenty five points if what we saw on Sunday against the Texans, imagine th that is the Ravens' low for the offense. That's a low for this offense because they missed so many opportunities. They turned the ball over. They punted. There were times when they, they wouldn't convert a third down. The, the offensive line gave up sacks. So that if that's the low, but they still scored 25 points. If that's a low, imagine when they do, they hit that stride. Imagine what they can do then. Imagine when they hit the highs. It's going to be great, man. It will be. So I, I just wanted to make sure we had proper context with how we looked at and evaluated the offense. Of course, yeah, it did have its struggles, and we talk about the struggles for sure. 
But if 25 points is a struggle in Baltimore Ravens offense, I cannot wait to see what they look like when they get that thing rolling. So, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. We got plenty more to come. And one more thing before I get out of here. No matter what it is that you do, uh, no matter how positive you try to be, um, no matter how uplifting or encouraging you try to be, it's always going to be people that have something negative to say, no matter what it is. That's whether how you do your work, that's no matter how you run your family, no matter what it is that you, it's always going to be people that have something negative to say. And my point to that, who cares? Don't let it kill your vibe. Do not let it steal your joy. Don't let them mess up, mess you up. Don't. Because if you let them, then that would be them winning. And negativity don't got no place. Negativity and winning, don't, it, it don't mix. So y'all keep doing what y'all do. Y'all keep y'all heads up. Y'all keep being positive. I, I really do love y'all. And I appreciate everything that y'all do. Because y'all do a whole lot more than you realize. So just wanted to give you that reminder before we get out of here. I love you. I, you watching this, I love you. I wish I could give you a big hug. But we'll stick with a virtual hug for now. I appreciate you. And I hope you have a really, really great day. And we out.